My name is Beth Hiley for Board Game Geek TV. We're going to begin a new series called Classic Game Explanations. These are games that have consistently made the top 100 list for multiple years on BGG, but don't have a lot of video coverage or explanations. The first game in this series is going to be Ra, which is an a older Rainier Knizia game, which is currently published here in the U.S. by Rio Grande Games. Now in Ra, it has an Egyptian theme, but it's really a good old-fashioned auction game where players are going to be trying to collect the most points over three rounds. Whoever has the most points is going to win. Now, like I mentioned before, Raw is an auction game for three to five players and takes about an hour. Now, the person who has the most points is going to be the winner, and points are shown on these little tablet markers. So this is a value of one, five and ten. Each player is going to start the game with ten, a value of ten on their tablet. So the game recommends taking two five value tablets and putting them face down in front of every person. Then each player is also given three or four sun tokens, uh, depending on how many players there are. There's a chart in the rules that will tell you exactly what set to give to each player. So uh, those who get exceptionally high numbers are going to be balanced out with getting exceptionally low numbers. So everyone should have a pretty well-balanced set. So once everyone has their 10 points in tablets and a set of three or four sun tokens, then you're ready to begin the game. On their turn, a player can do one of two things. They can either draw a tile from out of the bag or they can start an auction on purpose using this blue raw token. Now if they decide to draw a tile, then they're simply going to reach into the bag and draw out one tile at random and place it here in this auction track. That would be the end of their turn. Now the next player has the choice to either draw a single tile out of the bag or start an auction. If a player is not drawing a tile out of the bag, their only other option is to start an auction, which they are going to use by placing this blue figurine of raw down in front of them and saying raw and announcing it to the table. They are going to force an auction to start right now, and it's going to go once around the table, and the person who declared raw is going to be the last to bid. Now, it may be that when a person is drawing a tile out of the bag, they may draw a raw tile which you'll note looks exactly the same as the raw token. Now this is also going to trigger an auction even though a person chose to draw tiles on their turn. So either one of these two pieces will start an auction, one on purpose and one by accident. Now when you do get one of these raw tokens when you're drawing things out of the bag, you're going to put it up here on the raw track. Now there are different amounts of players here. So make sure you start these raw t this raw token countdown at the appropriate place. Now I'm doing a sample game here of four players, so I've placed the first raw token in the four player spot, and then any amount of players in the game that you're going to fill up this track from left to right. Now let's review the auction process. Just a reminder, auctions are either triggered using a tile, when you're drawing tiles out of the bag, or you can force an auction on purpose by declaring raw on your turn. So in my example here, it's my turn, and let's say I drew a raw tile out of the bag. These were tiles that had been previously drawn out of the bag, and these are what are going to be up for auction. Now since it is my turn, I get to be in the best position, and I'm going to be the last one to bid. Starting with the player on my left, everybody has one and only one chance to either pass or bid a higher number. So starting with this player, they might say, I would like to bid a three using their sun tokens. Then the next player, who currently has sun tokens of four, eight, and eleven, would either have to choose a higher number or pass. So they might say, sure, I'll bid the four. Maybe our third player over here says, I'm not interested, I pass. And now it's back to me. I either have to bid a larger number or I pass as well, in which case the winning bid would be the four, and that player would get the auction. But I think this array of tiles looks pretty awesome, so I'm going to bid my six, which means I'm going to be the winning bid, because this only goes once around the table. 
When I win an auction, I'm going to exchange my winning sun tile token with the one that was in the center. And then this one I've just received from the center, I'm going to place face down to show that I have won a single auction. And now all these tiles are mine. Now let's review a few odds and ends of the auctions. Anytime you bid a number, so let's say I'm bidding the two, and I am outbid by that person who's bidding the three, that number resets back to me. I don't lose it. The other big thing to keep in mind with auctions is whether or not that auction has been triggered by accident with a tile or has been triggered on purpose using the raw token. If I decide to bid on purpose by declaring raw on my turn and everybody else passes, I must bid a number because come on, I started it on purpose. I better know what I'm getting in for. If an auction was triggered by accident by a raw tile being drawn out of the bag, then it is allowable for everybody to pass. So since this happened on my turn, if everyone, including me, decides to pass, everything here in the middle would stay and it then would be the next player's turn to decide whether they want to declare raw or draw another tile. And finally, if this entire display fills up, and let's say this bidding display fills up on my turn. So I draw this last god tile on my turn. Now the next person unfortunately is forced to declare raw. But because again they were forced to start an auction, much like what a tile would do, everyone is still allowed to pass. If everyone does pass on a full auction like this, then that entire auction would sweep and would just be returned to the box. You'll find that might happen when there are a lot of disaster tiles and really no one wants to touch that offering. And oftentimes the offering tray will fill up and then revert back to the box. We know that whenever you are the highest bidder, you're gonna take that number and put it in the middle and in return you get the number that was there before. So keep in mind, whatever tiles you win, essentially you're winning the number in the middle as well, which could make that selection of tiles look a lot better or could make that selection of tiles look a lot worse. Because once you've won all three of your auctions, that's it, you are out of the round. You are going to do nothing for the rest of that round until the round is ended. So you are not gonna draw tiles and you're not gonna declare raw. So you can pretty much go get up and get a drink of water. Once the round is ended, then everyone at the table is going to score. And when we start a new round, those three tiles that you have acquired from last round's auctions are now your new numbers to start the next auction. So just a word of caution that when you're looking at a selection of tiles to also consider the number that is in the middle can be equally as important as any of the tiles that you see here in the auction track. There are two ways that a round can end. First, if no one has any face up sun tokens left, that is if everyone has won their maximum number of auctions, then that would automatically end the round. So in this example here, only the player with the remaining three over here has an auction left to, to uh, purchase. As soon as they have purchased that last auction, the round would be over. More commonly, a round is ended when this raw token track fills up. So you notice we are down to all but one space left. As long as someone still has some sun tokens available, they're gonna keep drawing tiles. Unfortunately, as soon, the instant that last raw token is drawn, the round is over. There is no final auction at the end of a round, and anyone who is left with remaining sun tokens, unfortunately, is out of luck. Once a round has ended, either by the raw token track filling up or once everyone has used their allotted amount of uh, auctions, then we're going to do a between round scoring. So there will be a scoring after round one, round two, and round three. Now, 
What tiles will get you points and how many you get is printed here on the corner of the board. But I find that it is far, far easier and I strongly recommend that you go on BGG, go to the player, the listing for RAW and print out one of the fabulous player aid boards that many of the users have created. This one was created by Matthew Frederick and is probably my favorite that I've seen up there at the moment. Now this shows you all the different tiles that are available in the game and what they're worth and when they score because some of these will only score at the very end of the game and after round three only. Now in later printings of this game you'll also find that there's a little symbol here to help you out. Those tiles that have an X up here in the top corner mean that you get to keep them and accumulate them throughout the entire course of the game. Those tiles that have no X are going to be scored at the end of that round and then discarded. So you're going to have to keep collecting them every round. The first tile that we're going to review are money tiles. Each money tile is worth three points. And since it has no X, as soon as you score it, you then discard it. Second type of tile are pharaoh tiles. These do have an X, so you get to hang on them for the entire game. Your goal is to collect more pharaohs than any other player, because the person with the most pharaohs is going to get a bonus of five points, while the person with the least pharaohs is going to get a penalty of negative two points. If any multiple players tie for having the most or the least, then each player would get the full reward or penalty individually. The third type of tile that we're going to review are culture tiles. You hopefully want to get at least one culture per round. Note that they have no X, so you do have to go hunting for them every round. If you end up with no culture by the end of a round, that's unfortunately worth negative five points. If you can get up to three different types of culture though, that's going to be an extra bonus of five points. If you could get four different types of culture, then you get 10. And if you can get a set of all five in one round, then you're going to get 15 points. Now, unfortunately, having doubles of the same culture will do you absolutely nothing. The fourth type of tile that we're going to review are farms and floods. Now, for each farm that you have, it is unfortunately going to be worth absolutely nothing. But they are X tokens, so you are allowed to acquire them across the entire game. Farms only become pointable when you have at least one flood to go with it. As soon as you have one flood, then each tile in this area is going to be worth a point apiece. Now it's okay to have multiple floods, each one is still going to be worth one point. But unfortunately, at the end of each round, all those floods are going to disappear and you're going to have to try and acquire another flood token in another auction. Now, monument tiles are going to be the long strategy of this game. Monuments only score at the very end of the game. Now, these are X tiles, so you're going to be acquiring them. They will never discard. But unfortunately, you only start to score and gain bonuses, significant bonuses, when you get a set of at least seven different types. So this would be seven out of eight of the different monuments would net me a bonus of 10 points at the end of the game only. If I was lucky enough to get an entire set of eight, then that would net me 15 points. Again, only at the end of the game. Now you can score monuments in two different ways by getting a set of seven different or eight different, and then you can also get sets of the same. A set of three identical monuments will get me five points, four identicals will get me 10 points, and five identicals will get me 15 points. There's a breakdown of all the amounts of tiles in the game rules, so you can kind of predict perhaps how many of those tiles are left in the game, particularly as you get near the end. The final tile we're going to look at are god tiles. Now each god tile is worth two points at the end of the game. And since they have no X on them, unfortunately, you would then discard them once you scored it. But god tiles have another power that you could use instead of gaining two points. On your turn, instead of drawing a tile out of the bag or declaring raw, I could spend a god token that I had acquired in a previous auction to steal one and only one tile here in the auction track. So I might throw away my god tile, I throw away it forever in the box, 
and I take perhaps that one tile that I have been dying for and that would be my entire turn. Now there is one drawback to that is you have to have some remaining auctions available. So you have to have some of your sun tiles still flip up to be able to turn in a god token. Unfortunately, not all the tiles in the bag are beneficial. You might find while drawing one out of the bag that you run into one of these four, which are all disaster tiles. Each one of these would be added to the auction track just like any other tile and would penalize the player who then wins that auction. Each one of these causes that winner of the auction to lose two tiles of different types. So this one would be Death to the Pharaoh, so you'd lose two Pharaoh tiles, two Culture tiles, two Flood and Farm tiles, and you must discard the Floods first if you have them, and then two Monuments. If you have the choice of which ones you wish to discard, that is entirely up to the person who acquires these. And if you're lucky enough not to have any of that tile, well then you just dodge that bullet and that might be a great option for you to acquire because it might not interest very many other players. Once you've discarded the appropriate amount and type of tiles, then this disaster tile is just discarded back into the box for the rest of the game. At the very end of the game, once everyone has completed scoring all of their tiles, including monuments, since that only happens at the end of the game, all the players are going to flip up all of their sun tokens, and they're going to score those as well. You're going to add up the sum of all of these numbers, and the person who has the highest sum of suns is going to get positive 5 points, whereas the person who has the least sum of all their sun tokens is going to get negative 5 points. So it's even more important in round 3 to make sure that you are careful about what sun tokens you are acquiring along with an auction, because they will hopefully net you positive points or potentially negative points as well. Well, that's a video explanation of Ra. For more classic title explanations, stay tuned on our YouTube channel at BoardGameGeekTV and enjoy!